Hi everyone, I am Anirban Mitro and I am going to present Cooperative Game Theoretic Analysis of Shared Services. I am from Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee, India. I would like to introduce all the other authors of this paper. Dr. Manuke Gupta, he is also from Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee and Professor N. Hemachandra from Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. So in this paper, we have discussed about fair scheduling policies in multi-class priority based queuing systems. Fair scheduling policies are helpful for a decision maker, central decision maker to fair, take fair decision to prioritize queue classes. Several solution concepts of a cooperative game theory such as Shapley value the code nucleolus they actually capture fairness. So that is the point behind using cooperative game theory to capture fairness in scheduling policies. Now we plan to model the queuing system as a form of a cooperative game. Then we are going to solve this cooperative game using these solution concepts and whatever allocations we are going to get from there, we are going to associate this allocation to the fair scheduling policies. Then the then the to the scheduling policies. Then the scheduling policies, what we are going to get, it is going to be fair in nature as we are using cooperative game theory. We using we are using most generic queuing model, which is MG1. Now let's assume uh, in our n class mg1 queuing model where both the classes will be having same service rate and distribution. Let's say PV is the cooperative game where P is nothing but the set of players 1 to n, V is the worth function of the players and in this case as it is a cooperative game so players or classes are allowed to collaborate between each other. Now we assume it is a transferable utility game or worth for the null correlation is 0. Now the scheduling policies, scheduling policies can be static or dynamic. So let's say pi is a scheduling policy here where player has the highest priority. For a two class game player one has highest priority under policy pi 1 2 and for two class game for player 2 it is going to be 2 1. So for mean waiting time for player 1 under policy pi is going to be expected waiting time for player 1 under policy 1 2 and for player 2 it is going to be expected waiting time for player 2 under policy 2 1. Now before calculating the Shapley value, the code and nucleus, we need to know the worth functions. So let's assume VI is the worth of a player, which is going to be our case rho i into summation of all pi in ni expected waiting time of player i under policy pi. So we are considering actually the expected waiting time and multiplying applying with the load factor of class i. And for worth for the correlation it is going to be uh, like that we are actually uh, considering average of mean waiting times weighted by load factor for, for all the participants in the correlations and for the grand correlation we are actually considering all the players instead of considering just a uh, uh, part participants in a correlation. So actually the grand correlation is following Klenox conservation law uh, it is independent to the scheduling policies. Pi is the policy where player i has the highest priority in this case. Ni is the set of policies where player in I has higher priority and Ns is the set of policies where players in S have higher priority. Now the two class games representation will be like that. If we simply put N equal to 2 in that exp in those expressions then we are going to get this much amount of V1, V2 and V12. And this expected waiting time for player 1 and player 2 under policies can be calculated in, in, in terms of row 1 and row 2. The load factors where W0 is going to be summation of i equal to 1 to n rho i lambda i upon 2 sigma square sigma square plus 1 by mu square where sigma square is the variance of service time and mu is the service rate and v12 is greater than v1 plus v2 that we found it it means that players have incentive to collaborate in this game and also we have found the two class game is going to be convex now we are solving this game using code and shapley value so we already proved two class game is convex so the code is non empty we, we can get to know this from Nadahari 2014, page number 424. We can refer this book for that. And this is the expression for the code, what we have got. And from this expression, you can say that x1 and x2 are the allocations for player 1 and player 2. If we add this two, it is going to be the right hand side of the Klendorf's conservation law. And let's say Shapley value for player 1 and player 2 are phi 1 and phi 2 respectively. So these are the expressions for phi 1 and phi 2 for player 1 and player 2 Shapley values. And if we add this to it is also going to be the right hand side of the Klenox conservation law. And also if we put rho 1 is higher than rho 2 then we are going to get phi 1 is greater than phi 2 and vice versa. It means that higher load plus penalized mode. 
now the nucleolus so nucleolus is another solution concept in cooperative game theory which minimizes maximum excess of the most uh, unhappy correlation so let's find out the nucleolus for this game let's nucleolus is nothing but the shapley value so if it is so then excess for correlation 1 is going to be v1 minus phi 1 and for correlation 2 it is going to be v2 minus phi 2 and for the grand correlation it is going to be 0 at phi as phi 1 plus phi 2 is right hand side of the klenrox conservation law same as v12 as it is a convex game so the excess is will be either zero or negative in this case we are going to get uh, negative excess we are getting negative excess and let's say there is any other allocation x1 star and x2 star which can further reduce this uh, excesses so if it is so then we can say v1 minus x1 star less than v1 minus phi1 and v2 minus x2 star is less than v2 minus phi2 which is actually representing x1 star is greater than phi1 and x2 star is greater than phi2 which can't be true because phi1 and phi2 is right hand side of the Klendorf conservation law so from here we can say nucleolus is shapley value now delay dependent priority was first introduced by Klenrock in the year of 1964 so uh, actually two class game it is going to be convey it is going to be complete we can get to know from Klenrock 1964 Mitrani et al 1977 and Gupta et al 2020 so actually for DDP there is a parameter assigned for each and every of the DQ discipline which is BI then we calculate the instantaneous dynamic priority and the server selects the highest priority class now for fair scheduling policy, fair scheduling policy is helpful for prioritizing new classes. Let's say a parameter beta which is nothing but b2 upon b1, it is going to prioritize different classes for this case and b1 and beta, b2 are weights associated with class 1 and class 2 respectively. So if b beta equal to 0.8 there we are then we are going to get b2 equal to 0.8 b1 it means that the central decision maker is prioritizing the q class 2.8 times more than q class 1. Now from Klenrock 1964 we can get to know the mean waiting time for class 1 and class 2 or player 1 and player 2 under DDP. Now uh, we are calculating, the, we are assigning this fair scheduling policy with Shapley value. So this is the Klenrock's conservation law. Now we have also found the addition of Shapley value is going to be the right hand side of the Klenrock's conservation law. Then we can write it in this way like rho 1 plus phi, rho 1 into phi 1 hat plus rho 2 into phi 2 hat equal to our right hand side of the Klenrock's conservation law where phi 1 hat and phi 2 are high to hats are given now with com by compare comparing this expression with the mean waiting time under ddp we can uh, get beta shapley as fair scheduling policy parameters which can assign the fair scheduling policy pi shapley fairly which is going to be this much beta shapley equal to this much so this is this is the fair scheduling policy uh, uh, for fair scheduling policy parameter beta shapley that can achieve fair scheduling policy pi shapley and the leftmost part will be activated when rho 1 or load factor for class 1 is higher than class 2 and rightmost part will be activated when load factor for class 2 is higher than class 1 okay and nucleolus is shapley value so beta nucleolus is going to be beta shapley now the stability region so from this triangle stability triangle we get to know that like uh, when rho 2 is less than rho 1 then beta shapley lies between 0 and 1 which is the bottom triangle and the upper triangle is representing when rho 2 is higher than rho 1 then beta shapley lies between 1 to infinity and rho 1 equal to rho 2 if it is so then we are going to get beta shapley equal to 1 now for equal load factors like uh, if the load factors for both the classes are equal then beta shapley is overlapping with the uh, global FCFS and if load factor for class 1 is higher then beta Shapley you can just see like global FCFS is moving towards the scheduling policy 2 1 and if load factor for class 2 is higher than class 1 then the scheduling policy is moving towards the low the, the scheduling policy 1 2 in this case okay so it is moving towards 1 2 where player 1 has higher priority okay now the fair scheduling policy parameter to assign the code Okay, so this is the expression for uh, Klenrock's conservation law, rho 1 expected waiting time for player 1 under policy pi plus rho 2 expected waiting time for player 2 under policy pi is equal to rho w0 upon 1 minus rho. Now similarly we have already proved from the code expression that allocations if we add the allocations, the code allocations then it is going to be the right hand side of the Klenrock's conservation law. So x1 plus x2 we can just say it is rho w0 upon 1 minus rho. We can also modify this expression like that like rho 1 x1 hat plus rho 2 x2 hat is equal to rho w0 upon 1 minus rho. 
where x1 hat lies between w0 upon 1 minus rho rho 1 and w0 upon 1 minus rho 2 into 1 minus rho and x2 hat is like 1 upon rho 2 into rho w0 upon 1 minus rho minus rho 1 x1 hat upon rho 2. Now uh, sim in the similar way we are trying to find out a scheduling policy parameter beta code which can assign the code fairly. So we have found that the range of DDP scheduling policy parameter beta code which lies between 0 to inter infinity uh, closed interval that can achieve uh, the fair scheduling policy pi code. Now conclusion and the future research. So in this uh, research actually we have uh, uh, means we have model a two class mg1 queuing game in a form of a cooperative game Co two class mg1 queuing system in a form of a cooperative game so what we have done like uh, firstly we have modeled the uh, queuing system as a form of a cooperative game then we have solved this cooperative game by using couple of solution concepts like shapley value the cone nucleolus and whatever allocations we have got we have assigned uh, this allocations with fair scheduling policy ddp and finally we got fair scheduling policy parameter ddp which would be able to assign these solutions fairly so this was actually uh, the plan and we have done it successfully for two class game but uh, this research can be um, extended in different ways like uh, we can perform sensitivity analysis of different game theoretic solution concepts by changing the service time variance. So it means that in this case we have assumed that both of the classes is having the same service distribution and the same uh, service rate which is mu for both the classes. So we can also try to find out that what will be the changes of uh, phase scheduling policies if we can assume different classes will be having different service rate and also distribution, different service distribution. So it will be a nice research future research scope and along with that also we can further extend this model to three class or more classes things will be become more complicated if we assume a three class game or a more four class game or five class game then the calculation is going to be very much complex so it will be very hard to find out the fair scheduling policy at least a closed group expression for the fair scheduling policy in those cases so how we can tackle those things so we can actually try to find this out and another one thing is like so far we have discussed about like queuing systems where, where multiple number of classes are available so we can assume we can uh, like uh, we can extend this model to a queuing network like different kinds of queuing networks uh, uh, we know like we can assume for any kind of queuing, queuing network what would be the fair scheduling policy where multiple servers are present, multiple classes are present. So things will be very very complicated in this case but it will be very much uh, very very important topic actually like uh, to fair, find out the fair scheduling policy for a queuing network. So these are some actually future research scope like we can extend our model or we can just uh, try to find out these things and uh, these are the references what we have used. Thank you.